In the short term, you know, we had the midterm elections, and I think that that brought a little bit of certainty to the market. So the the gridlock was sort of what was expected from investors. Um, you know, that off of the prior weeks of good job numbers, you know, solid unemployment, solid GDP growth, positive consumer sentiment, and business sentiment. We saw a lot of um, and and the, sort of like the the post earnings lack of reward to the big fang names. We saw a lot of investors going back into the bull funds in the short term. So the three beta tech, the three beta artificial intelligence. And particularly healthcare, which actually had great earnings and was one of the standout sectors of the season. So, you know, prior to today, we have seen some of the flows in in the bull funds. So, Ron, as we talk about the tools that traders use, yep. some of these ETFs are them. But is there a sense that you're seeing in other parts of the market that we might not be as bullish as some of that trading flow has suggested, given today's action? Yeah, I was at Bertha showed one of those instances in which, you know, when we started seeing the Russell 2000 outperform, that's typically a late cycle indicator when small, when they say the soldiers start leading the generals. And then you've seen them now diverge on, on the downside. You'd see tech fall apart, housing, the interest rate sensitive sectors of the market have gone down a lot, semis getting killed. You know, all those divergences appear to be important. I also think you're picking up headwinds now. You know, the immediate response to the midterms was, oh, it wasn't as bad as thought. Now they're talking about 40 Democrats seats being, you know, or 40 Republican seats being flipped to Democrats. That's the biggest flip since 1973 in the Watergate era. So there's that, there's the Fed, there's weakness in China. So I think all of those things are looking like headwinds for the market that we had a relief rally that may not have been sustainable. We've been talking the past few days about sort of three themes that may be the dominant ones in 2019. One would be what happens on trade. Yeah. The other would be what happens on rates. The third would be what happens as the market begins to come face to face with the idea that corporate profit growth is going to slow from its current very high yeah. levels. Uh, we've also had a debate on the possibility that some think is a higher possibility and others not of a recession in 2019. Where are you on that? Both of you. Uh, so on, on my side, I think, you know, we're certainly cautious and we're looking at the headwinds you just mentioned. So we expect there to be continued rate hikes. However, as I mentioned before, you know, we do see a somewhat stable economy. I think the issue is that a lot of investors and traders are are experiencing a bit of a risk off attitude. You know, they are looking at the headwinds and they are looking at China and expecting some sort of result. And if we don't get positive feedback about China tariffs, and you know we have this continued continued you know fear of rate hikes continuing perhaps faster than we would like them to and growth retracting i do think that the market will continue to be volatile and that you know, traders will continue to have a bit of a risk off sentiment. And I think, you know, most of the traders that we do speak to believe that, you know, since Trump came into office, mm -hmm. the, the number being thrown around was 28 percent performance of S&P 500 and um, 18 out of 18, you know, post midterm positive sessions and 12 percent with a Republican president and gridlock house. However, you know, the growth trend for next year is probably expected to be a little bit less than that 12 percent. Wrap it up. Button it up, Ron. Um, <laughs> well, first of all, Peter Navarro was quoted coming out today and saying these, you know, international globalists are trying to pressure us to end the tariffs on China. That's not going to happen. Mm -hmm. That headwind sticks. Um, I think at the end of the day, we could see a growth slowdown, a growth scare in the U.S., maybe a real slowdown overseas. And I think the market really has to contend with more than we thought. And with respect to profits, which you talked about, third quarter profits up about 27 percent, even stronger than the first and second quarters. The, the comps next year are going to be very, They're very be difficult. Hard to beat. Hard so to, hard to beat. They'll be looking at organic growth. You know, it may not be an absolute top in profits, but the rate of change is going to be important to the market. And I think that's yeah. what we've been seeing all year. The market's been flat, even though you've had more than 20% growth across the board for three straight quarters.